Good afternoon. We are going to be taking a look at some different skin disorders and problems today. Um, and what we're going to start with is one called albinism. Uh, this is one you're probably familiar with. This is a genetic disorder. It is an autosomal recessive disorder. So it's not carried on the X or the Y chromosomes. It's carried on one of the other chromosomes, and it is a recessive disorder. So you have to inherit two genes, one from each parent, in order to have this particular disorder. With this, your, skins contain, uh, mel your skin contains melanocytes, but they cannot make melanin. So you produce no melanin anywhere in the body, so you have no pigmentation, which means you have no protection from UV rays, which can be deadly if you're living near the equator. Um, in, in addition, you may be familiar with, um, you know, when uh, al albinos have uh, red, what look like red eyes, and the reason for that is they produce no pigment for the colored part of the eye called the iris. So what you're seeing is light reflecting off of the retina, which is highly vascularized. That means it's got a lot of blood vessels. And so when the light reflects off those blood vessels and comes back, back out, what you see is red. And that's why they appear to have red eyes uh, if, if they are, have albinism. Okay, so uh, second disorder to take a quick look at is vitiligo. With vitiligo, this is an autoimmune disease. That means the body's immune system attacks its own cells instead of attacking foreign cells. Um, so in this case, the immune system destroys melanocytes and it destroys them at, at random locations in the body. Um, and so you end up with these uh, patches of skin where there is no melanin. And if it happens on the scalp, then you produce uh, the hair that's produced there is white because there's no melanin uh, in the hair. Uh, it can happen on the hands, it can happen on the arm, it can happen anywhere in the body. Um, and you see that these patches of uh, skin that have no melanin. Um, all right, uh, when we take a look at other disorders, the color of an individual's skin can provide clues. Uh, jaundice is the first one we'll take a look at. The color with jaundice, as you can see in this picture here, is yellow. And the best place to identify jaundice is going to be in the whites of the eyes uh, because it becomes very obvious when they turn uh, yellow. Uh, and this is usually a sign of some kind of problem with the liver, with the liver or the gallbladder. Um, and liver failure uh, will lead to this jaundice because the liver processes uh, something, um, it, it is responsible for the breakdown of red blood cells, and if it's not doing that properly, you end up with the buildup of this stuff called bilirubin in your blood that gives you this yellowish uh, color to your skin and your, the whites of your eyes. Erythema is a redness of the skin that can be caused by rashes, it can be caused by working out, um, it can be caused by fever, uh, and the color with erythema is red, as you see here around the lips and on the stomach here with this rash. Um, another color that we sometimes see in skin uh, is cyanosis, which is uh, the skin turns blue. That's usually an indication of poor circulation to part of the body. Uh, this affects uh, older individuals more than younger individuals typically, uh, or if you have some sort of disorder with your circulatory system, you might see this, especially in the extremities. You can see the tips of the fingers and the feet here are blue. Uh, it can also be an indication that there is a cutoff of circulation to part of the body. Um, another disorder or problem with the integumentary system that's a very serious problem are burns, which are uh, life-threatening. Um, as a result of burns, there can be a massive loss of body fluids, uh, so people uh, dehydrate very quickly and go into uh, fatal circulatory system shock, which we read about um, when we did the Wisdom of the Body um, with Walter Cannon. Uh, and another big uh, problem related to burns is that you are at a serious risk for infection because you no longer have that protective layer that is keeping bacteria out. Uh, there are three degrees of burns. First degree burn involves just the epidermis and you get some redness like in a sunburn. A second degree burn uh, will affect both the epidermis and the upper dermis and you would get a blister. Um, one year I, I was cleaning up hot plates uh, from around the classroom and uh, just going down and grabbing them and picking them up. And I did not realize but one hot plate that I went to grab was still plugged in and it was burning hot. I went to pick it up like this and I ended up with blisters across all of my fingers. Um, so I, I had a second degree burn across all my fingers. It happened to happen while we were doing the um, integumentary system unit, if I remember correctly. So it was a nice 
uh, lesson for my students um, on burns. I'd rather not have done it, but at least I got to use it for something. Um, and then third degree burns involve the full thickness of the skin. So the entire epidermis and dermis are burned off. Even some of the layer below the dermis called the hypodermis could uh, burn off as well. That hypodermis, remember, is not technically part of the skin. It's a layer of adipose tissue, which is fat tissue that lies underneath the dermis or deep to the dermis. Um, and that can be burned as well. And like I said, you're at risk for infection. So here we see examples of first degree burns where the epidermis only uh, is involved. So we have uh, sunburn here. Uh, second degree burn, the epidermis and dermis are burned and you get some blistering. And then third degree burns involve the full thickness of the skin uh, and sometimes even part of the hypodermis. And for this, you'd have to get a skin graft where they take skin from another part of the body uh, and put it on that burned area. Okay, now, uh, what doctors will do when trying to figure out how much of the body is burned is use the rule of nines, where different regions of the body, different parts of the body, are, are assigned a multiple or a factor of nine in terms of what percent of the skin they make up. For example, the uh, thoracic and abdominal regions here uh, make up 18% of the body's skin on the front and on the, uh, or on the anterior side, and on the posterior side, the shoulder and uh, back regions make up 18% on the posterior side. Uh, the anterior part of the face is 4.5% of your skin, the posterior part of your face is 4.5% 4, 4 of your skin. So, these, so doctors use this rule of nine to figure out what percent of the body has been burned, uh, and that then informs the treatment that they will give. How much antibiotics do they need to give? What, what amount of fluid do they need to provide? Um, all the types of treatments that they need um, are determined by what percent of the body has been burned. Okay, a couple other disorders that I thought I would mention because some of you may be familiar with them. One of them is uh, acne, which is very common among teens, uh, where you get a skin disturbance in areas of the skin that are rich in sebaceous glands, like the face, okay, um, and the, on the back and the chest. Uh, hormones like testosterone stimulate the release of sebum, Testosterone, of course, you get a surge of testosterone when you enter puberty, which would, uh, if you're a male, which would explain why males will uh, get acne as they reach puberty. Um, so sebum, remember, is the oil that is produced by the sebaceous glands. And an overproduction or accumulation of sebum along with ker keratin that is shed from your hair will block the hair follicle. Uh, and then what happens is you get this white plug of sebum and keratin that turns black when exposed to the air, and then it becomes red as bacteria move in and start to decompose the sebum, that oil, which is organic and can be a food source for bacteria, and that causes it to turn red. So this is just a diagram showing you, here we have a plugged follicle with sebum from the sebate, here's the sebum and keratin, the sebum from the sebaceous gland here, um, bacteria move in and start to feed on that, on that sebum, that oil that was produced by the sebaceous gland, and that leads to inflammation uh, as the body will then start to try and fight off the uh, bacterial infection. So some other disorders uh, that you may have heard of or be familiar with, psoriasis, my younger son who is in seventh grade has psoriasis, not this bad though. Um, and with this, the body's T cells, which are part of the immune system, attack healthy skin cells by mistake. Uh, and that leads to this process that's described here where you get this buildup, this accumulation of cells, um, usually around the elbow, and, elbows and, and knees, right below, above the elbow and below the knee. Okay, and, and this won't stop unless you get some treatment. There are different um, uh, ointments that you can put on that will help to reduce that uh, psoriasis. Eczema is another one some of you may be familiar with. This is caused by an allergic reaction. You end up with dry, itchy patches of skin that look like rashes, and it's not localized to just the elbows and the knees. Um, you may also have skin swelling, flaking, so possibly bleeding, depending on how bad it is. And again, this is treated with moisturizers, uh, hydrocortisone, and immunosuppressants, which are drugs that suppress the immune system, because an allergic reaction is simply an overreaction of the immune system to something that's not actually harmful. So this is eczema and you can see it's this red, rashy, uh, itchy skin, um, but this covers the, this individual's entire arm. It's not just localized to that elbow or, or knee region. 
Uh, and then the last disorder or disease that we'll take a look at is skin cancer. Um, there's different types of skin cancer that you need to be familiar with. First of all, there are benign skin cancers. That means they are not harmful. They're not going to spread. Uh, warts are an example of benign tumors of the skin. But skin cancer is usually associated with UV exposure um, and also just the aging process of skin. Uh, Precancerous, pre-malignant um, cells, which means they haven't turned into cancer yet, but they could become cancerous, are called uh, actinic keratoses. Uh, and these, if untreated, can become squamous cell carcinomas, which is one type of skin cancer. Basal cell carcinomas, the uh, cells of the stratum basale, uh, become cancerous. That means they divide uh, frequently, rapidly, and out of control. Um, this is the most common type of skin cancer, very treatable, um, usually does not cause serious problems. Squamous cell carcinoma involves keratinocytes of the stratum spinosum. Uh, that become cancerous, again, generally treatable, generally caught uh, relatively easily as long as you're uh, seeing your dermatologist regularly as you should um, as you age. And then the most serious type of skin cancer is melanoma. Uh, this involves the melanocytes of, this, of the skin. This is the most dangerous type of skin cancer. This is the type that spreads to the body, spreads to other parts of the body, um, uh, and, and is deadly. Um, this, is, in fact, is uh, what killed Bob Marley. Um, he had some, uh, you know, he had some dark spots under his toenails, um, which is generally how um, one of the ways in which skin cancer is detected in individuals uh, who are black. And um, his doctor just missed it, misdiagnosed it. I think he thought it was some kind of bruising from him having played soccer. Uh, and then by the time it was actually diagnosed, it was too late to cure. So the A, B, C, D, E, this is how you identify that a mole might have become a melanoma. One, look for asymmetry. So if the two sides are not symmetrical, then you may have a melanoma. If there's border irregularity, so the edges are irregularly shaped, they're not nice and smooth, that is an indication it could be a melanoma. If a mole has varying shades of brown and black, so the color is not uniform throughout, it's not the same throughout, that could be an indication that you have a melanoma. If it has a diameter larger than six millimeters, so basically diameter larger than, uh, than an eraser on a, on a normal number two pencil, uh, that could be an indication that, she, that you may have a melanoma. And then if the, uh, if the mole is evolving, meaning the shape is changing, then, you may, the, then your mole may have uh, developed into a melanoma. So the A, B, C, D, E, if there's nothing else you remember from this entire class, this should be one thing that you remember is being able to identify a mole that may have turned cancerous. You wanna get it caught early before it spreads. Okay, so here's just some pictures. This is what a basal cell carcinoma would look like right here. Um, here is your squamous cell carcinoma, and then here is your melanoma, right? This mole right here is obviously changed in shape uh, it's bigger than six millimeters. It has irregular borders. It doesn't have uniform color throughout. It's got all the hallmarks of a, melan a mole that has become cancerous. Uh, and that is it for the disorders and diseases of the skin. Um, have a great day. I will see you soon.